On today's show, we're going to unbox Pioneer's new AVIX 7200 NEX. So stay tuned. So we have the new NEX 7200 7-inch touchscreen navigation with CarPlay and Android Auto. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Let's see what comes in the box. All right, so you get your new blue bag, Bluetooth antenna, or microphone. Yeah, it's, it's, micro. it's a microphone. Uh, your GPS antenna. Your auxiliary extension cable. These are about four feet. You also get one USB extension cable, the same length. You get a wiring harness, a bag of mounting screws, a GPS antenna mount if you want it, the owner's manual which is on a CD, a quick start guide, and an instruction manual for installation. Alright, so we're going to start with the back of the radio. We have the rear audio output. This is for an overhead or a set of headrest monitors, which this guy right here, the yellow, is the rear video output. These units have dual zones, so you can use these to feed rear seat entertainment. You have your GPS antenna, plugs in here. You have USB 1, which is Apple CarPlay. You have USB 2, which is Android Auto. Way back here is the HDMI input. You have your camera one or rear camera input here. This is a Pioneer dedicated plug. Subwoofer RCA outputs are right here, left and right. On this side of the radio, you have your main wiring harness. You have your iDatalink Maestro input. You have your Sirius XM for the SV, SXV300. You have your Bluetooth microphone input. You have your main antenna input, you have your auxiliary input, and your wired remote input for steering wheel controls. Now these are both eighth inch size, so make sure you get them right. You have the yellow black wire, which is mute. This is if you have GM and would like to retain your uh, OnStar. You have the white labeled RCA, which is your front output. You have green which is your rear output. Then you have gray, which is your audio input, as well as yellow, which is your video input. This is also selectable in the menu as a front for a front-facing camera. Okay, so we've turned it around, we have the unit powered up. When you power up the unit first, it's gonna ask you what language you speak. You have five to choose from. Go ahead and pick one and move on to your next. Now, this was really important last year and is not so much important this year because it has new auto sensing for CarPlay or Android Auto. Where it would become useful is if you're going to use the Bluetooth section of it. So if you're going to do iPhone, you'd leave it just the way it is. If you want to do Android Auto, you can switch it over to here. But it really doesn't matter as much because it will auto detect when you plug in your phone to either one or two USB. So now you come to the OK screen, which this year only stays up for seven seconds and then will magically disappear. Boom. Okay, so once you get done with the setup, it brings you to your main homepage. From here, we can take a look at the sources. So the first one to come up is HD Radio. HD Radio allows you to do a couple things. For one, it's going to make music sound better. Two, it's going to give you HD, which allows you to do things like simulcast. So for example, we'll come over here to a station. This is going to light up HD. As soon as this turns digital, it'll light up HD1. Now this gives us the ability to tap here and it has HD2. So now you have two stations on one station. So HD2 can be real or HD radio can be really fun. You have CD DVD, you have USB1 as well as USB 2. Now USB 1 is going to be for Apple CarPlay if you're an iPhone guy. USB 2 is going to be for Android Auto if you're an Android guy. We'll talk about those later. Next is going to be Pandora. You can do Pandora control from the radio by if you have an iPhone plugging it in or if you have an Android you can do it over Bluetooth. 
you have Bluetooth audio, you have HDMI input, that'll allow you to do things like screen sharing. You also have an SD card input. Now the SD card input is located behind the face of the radio. It goes right here, which is where the CD DVD goes. Now, like we said before, it's capable of doing Sirius XM. You have your auxiliary, your AV inputs, and the rear seat. Rear seat is that video output we were talking about that you, allows you to go into a rear overhead or headrest. You can do things like mirroring, play your CD, DVD, play USB, SD card, or your AV inputs. That way you can have it do something different in the rear seat, and you can do like radio or iPod or anything like that up front. So you can have two different things going on at once. Car source and car features. These are both for the iDatalink Maestro. If you're not using one of those adapters, these will not do anything for you. Rear camera allows you to turn off the camera. This is also where you're going to be able to switch between camera one and camera two if you're doing a front camera. Source off. This allows you to just put the source to sleep but still utilize the navigation, Bluetooth. Power off is a new feature that allow you to put the whole radio to sleep and shut it off just like you turned off the key. This is good if you have a power antenna and allow the power antenna to go down when you go through like a car wash. When it's in this mode, you do not get Bluetooth calling or navigation. Okay, now, so tell me a little bit about the screen. Okay, so this, as we said, is a 7-inch. This is a WVGA um, LED backlight clear resistive touchscreen. It's also motorized, like we just showed you, so all the stuff goes behind it. Now, it is 800 pixels by 480. So if you want to do a custom image, you can do custom backgrounds on these. Uh, that's the size you'd want to make your JPEG. And since we just mentioned that, let's talk about how we can customize it to make it match the colors in your dash. So if you hit the gears, come over here to the art palette, you have your choice of backgrounds. You have five static backgrounds, which are just images. And then you also have three graphical backgrounds, as well as if you don't want any backgrounds at all, you can hit off and it'll just make it black. Now once you've picked a background, you can click apply, and that background will be up. Hit illumination, you have different colors. Now these are for the buttons across the bottom. You can make it a rainbow, or if you want to, you can custom tailor it any color you like. Then you have themes. Themes allow you to change the main color in the background. So you basically have purple, blue, red, orange, green, and grayish blue. Depending on what background you have. Now, just for those of you who are wondering, the clock is set via the navigation system. The only thing you can do is change how you'd like it to display, or 12 or 24. So even though these radios have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we still find that a lot of people like just good old Bluetooth for like quick trips back and forth to the store, or you just don't want to take your, wall, your, your wallet, your phone out of your pocket, or right. your purse, or whatever. So it still has Bluetooth for calling as well as music. So let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so if you'd like to use the Bluetooth, first pair your phone to the unit. Then once you're paired, come over here and hit the phone icon. Once you hit that, it'll bring you to the Bluetooth menu. Once in the menu, you have your choice of things you can do. You can look at your play, your contacts easily by scrolling like this. You can look at your ingoing, outgoing, and missed. You can look at your old school dial. You can use voice. Uh, if you have an iPhone or launch Siri Eyes Free, you can ask it to do all kinds of things. If you have Android, you can use it to do Android things. Now, one thing to note that's nice about this Bluetooth is Pioneer uses what's called wideband speech recognition, which is basically double the bandwidth for calls, making them sound better. They equate it to the difference of AM and FM. So these things sound really nice now when you're talking to or receiving a call from whoever it is you're talking to. Yeah. Now, if you would like to use the Bluetooth for sound, Bluetooth audio, go to your drop-down menu, 
Now there's two ways you can get to it because Pioneer likes to do things with more than one door. So if you're over here, you can click Bluetooth Audio or you can go to the drop down menu and pick Bluetooth Audio. Both will get you to the same place. Now once you're in your Bluetooth, you can come over here and select the device that you're using. You can select your playlist and then you can select a song and it'll go ahead and start playing it. Okay, since we were talking about Bluetooth, that basically means we're talking about phones. Yes. And as we mentioned before, this one has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now the nice thing about this unit is that it will, you don't have to tell it which one you have. It knows that if you plugged in the USB 1, it'll do Apple CarPlay. So we'll go ahead and plug in USB 1. Now keep in mind, you can only do one of these at a time, you can't do both. So you either have to pick, you get the idea. So now once you're plugged in, it'll go ahead and it'll give you Apple CarPlay. So Apple CarPlay consists of a few features such as phone, music, maps, and messaging. It also allows you to listen to many different music uh, sources such as, or apps such as iHeartRadio, NPR, Spotify, Pandora, RDO. Now you also get Siri eyes free if you press and hold the button here. You can ask Siri all kinds of crazy questions and she'll do things like make text messages and phone calls or find restaurants for you or reply to text messaging. So you can come over here and press this. She'll ask you. You also get your Apple Maps that will display on the screen. It'll allow you to move around and go places. You can ask Siri to find you something. Siri, find me a Five Guys. US Highway 19 North. Let me know if you want to hear the whole list. You can go to your music. Now it's going to display all the same stuff you have on your phone. Now if you're an Android Auto user, you obviously don't care about that. Go ahead and plug in your Android phone. And it's going to go ahead and bring up Android Auto. Now Android Auto is going to list these have their tiles. She's going crazy. You can start playing whatever music you were listening to last time. Now, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay both give you this option right here, which is the secondary volume control. This is for guidance and or when the unit talks to you. So you can come over here. Find me a Five Guys. Showing results for Find Me a Five Guys. So there you go. And then again, you can make your phone calls and messaging and basically everything you can do in Apple CarPlay, you can do in Android Auto. One thing that makes the 7200 real popular is the fact that it has navigation. Now I know a lot of you out there going, well, if it has those two things, what do I need navigation for? I don't know, you have to find that reason for yourself. But we're gonna go ahead and show you the navigation anyways. All right, so come over here and hit the map button. So the first thing that's going to come up is going to ask you what language you speak. You can go ahead and scroll through this if you like, or just hit select. Next thing it's going to ask you is if you want to set up all your preferences. You do, so go ahead and hit next. Now this is where you're going to decide on how you want the unit to talk to you. You basically have two choices. You have what's called TTS, uh, which is text to speech, or whatever acronym you want to throw in there. And then you have just regular turn by turn. So text to, text to speech is going to say things like street names or intersections. Basically read the signs to you. Or this is just going to say turn left, turn right. So we'll go ahead and pick that one. Have and, a nice trip. Oh. Drive carefully. You have a couple languages to choose from. You can scroll through them. Go ahead and click next. Uh, next is setting up things like temperature. Currency, uh, weight, miles per gallon, feet, distance. Go ahead and click next. 
Then you have what type of roads you want to drive on. This is where you can turn off, like if you don't want to use toll roads, you can turn those off. Ferries, if you're a carpool lane guy, you can turn that on. Then go ahead and click finish. Now what this will do is this will pull up your map. From here, this is going to work like pretty much any navigation system you've ever used. Click these four little squiggly lines here, type a new route. You can type an address, you can find a place, you can go to a save location. You can do coordinates, you can show history, saved routes. Up here, you get the ability, this has uh, nav traffic. Nav traffic is nice because it'll go ahead and highlight on the roads anywhere where there's an accident similar to the way your phone operates. It'll also tell you what the actual accident is. So if you're cruising down the road and you're like, oh, or the interstate, and you're like, why is traffic backed up? You can go ahead and it'll it'll tell you, it'll give you, a, you know, say, hey, there's a three-car pile up, you know, 1.5 miles up the road. So you can plan your route a little bit better. Now, if you actually have the navigation going, it will narrow the field down to just what is along your path as opposed to everything in your general vicinity. So that's really kind of a neat feature. Now, hopefully when you buy a radio like this, you're not just buying it for cool little widgets like CarPlay and navigation. You might be, but whatever. One of the nice things about an NEX radio is they sound really good. Okay. They have an amazing sound pack built into them. They have 50 watts by four of deck power. The preamp outputs are four volt. Yes. So you have six channel four volt preamp output. That's pretty sexy. Um, and you have a whole sound pack built into it. Yes. Would you like me to tell you about it? Yes, tell me. Okay, let's find out about that. Then we'll hit the icon, gears. We'll go to radiating speaker. This is gonna take us into our sound pack. First thing up is the EQ. It has a 13 band EQ with five presets and two custom presets. So you can pick whichever one you like and or make your own. Now the nice thing is, is once you have your EQ set up, you can X out of this, you'll notice right here it says EQ. You can tap that and you can come over and it's an easy way to get to the EQ without having to go through everything. So you hit X and it'll take you back. Balance and fader, mute level. Mute level's nice for the Bluetooth calling and or the factory navigation system. This is what will attenuate the sound when they go to talk. Next is source level. Source level is really nice. So if you have uh, an Android phone and it's got a real crappy USB output level, which, hey, some phones do, uh, you can actually turn up the sensitivity in the radio to compensate for that. Next is rear speaker on and off. The reason why it has rear speaker on and off is because the unit does have dual zone for video. So if you have little children's in the back and they're listening to uh, a movie, you may want to turn off the rear speakers so that they don't have to listen to the, what you're listening to and their headphones. So it's kind of a nice feature. They also have subwoofer on and off for that same reason. Next is gonna be speaker level. Unlike fader, where it affects all the front speakers or all the back speakers, level control, speaker level control, allows you to go and independently adjust each speaker. So you have your subwoofer volume control, as well as your rears and your fronts independent from one another. The real reason behind it is for the next feature, which is listening position. You can go ahead and pick a listening position in this, which turns on the time alignment, which is right here. Now, it gives you a generic time alignment setting, which allows you to then go in, if you'd like, and measure from your ear to a speaker and put in your own. But if you come back here to your speaker level, you notice they have changed. They've added negative numbers to them. This is what allows you to help direct that sound back and forth across the dash so you get a perfect center, center image. Now we'll go to crossovers. So this has a front, rear, and sub crossover that you can turn each one on and off. So if you don't want any crossovers, that's cool. If you do, you could turn on each one independently from one another. So you could just have the rear crossover on, you could just have the front on, you could just have the sub on. That's up to you, or you can turn them all off. Each one of them is adjustable simply by dragging back and forth. Now these two grayed out features right here, the auto EQ, uh, there's a Pioneer makes a separate 
microphone that will allow you to, when the unit is off, if you hit eject right here, open up the screen. Right here behind the face is a eighth inch headphone jack. That is for Pioneer's Auto EQ. It'll go ahead and measure the time alignment and speaker distance for you. All right, guys, that brings this one to a close. I know we may have gone sort of fast over some of the features and not gone super in depth on them. That's okay. We've got videos up on all the features all on their own, independent videos. So uh, if you go to the show notes, they'll show a list to the NEX playlist where all that is. So if you want to know more about the EQ or more about Android Auto or Apple CarPlay or anything like Pandora, how it works and all that good stuff, it's all there for you to have fun with. Yay! If you like our videos, please subscribe. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. You guys can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And as always, you guys have a great night. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you later next time. Bye.